Hi everyone. Um, it's very close. Um, it's Carla here from Paint Me Vintage uh, and I'm here um, in the Bay of Pliny. We are the Bay of Pliny's home of premium chalk paint, furniture and interiors. How are you going? Um, I'm all set up. This is kind of going to be my studio. I think this is working. Oh yeah. Um, oh cool. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is going to be my studio and I'm going to endeavour on Mondays to bring you some kind of tutorials, paint projects, that sort of thing. So we'll see how this pans out. I, I'm going to try and do um, a project from start to finish um, and it might just be in lots of different layers. I've got everything down here to show you, but um, yeah, to start with, I thought we would... Um, talk about paint inlays. So IOD, which is the company that we um, get all of our transfer, furniture transfers, our molds and our paint inlays from, uh, I have a product called Paint Inlays. It looks like this. Oh, I think you can even read that. Can you read that? I must have flipped it around the right way. Um, I've been playing with the settings, so I'm just not sure if it's working properly or not. Um, you can read it. Oh, awesome. Um, so this is a paint inlay. It's, as you can see, really big. Um, and it comes in a pad. And what they are, are a whole bunch, I've got paint on already, a whole bunch of different, very thin sheets of paper with images on them. And these images are actually water-based embedded paint on there and to activate that paint you need to put it into wet paint or into a water-based paint and that's exactly what we're going to do today we are going to put it into our um artisan chalk paint not sure where the camera is on this um artisan chalk paint we're going to use um, uh, well tusk for all our projects just to keep it nice and simple and um, yeah I'm going to spin you down now and let's get started this one is a really super cute one and all the products you can get here at um, in our store I'll just quickly show you the back this one has eight sheets and in it you get all of those different images so it's really perfect for really small projects um, and that's what I hope to create for you today. So let's spin you down and see how we get going. Hoping you can see the table. Might just have to play with that a little bit more. You want to see the table, not my lap. How does that look? No. Sorry, I'll just get this right because I want to give you like a good look at everything that I'm doing. Hopefully that's about right. Okay, so my few. So I've got everything laid out here. Um, I probably, I might be able to see questions, I'm not sure. So feel free to ask any questions. Um, let me know if you're watching. And certainly if um, if you're watching this on the replay, um, yeah, please say hi as well because I'd really like to make this a regular feature just to show you or give you some ideas about little projects that you can do. And um, yeah, maybe just teach you a few new tips and tricks about things. So my first little one I'm going to do is I bought the um, little frames. Um, they had a picture in them. I've actually got two that I didn't care for at all. So I've painted over that entirely with um, with one of the whites from our Artisan Premium Chalk Paint range. I'm not sure what one. Um, and then see on the frame, the frame was not too bad, but horrible but I've just kind of tickled the paint over that so you can still see some of that coming through so let's go through the paint inlays and find a nice image that we can put into there something perhaps that I should have organized earlier <laughs> but hey oh, I really I am personally 
quite partial to things with writing in them. Oh, and this also has an up and down, it has a hook there. So I need to make sure I have like a vertical image. I'm gonna put two of these on. Oh yeah, maybe this one. See that one there? I think that could fit into there really, really nicely. Move this over here a little bit. Can you see okay? Hopefully. Good. Okay, so we're going to grab that one. So they, all the sheets are in between like little tissue. And that's just to protect um, the delicate um, paint that's on them. So I'm going to cut this one out. There's a right way and there's a wrong way to these. The paint's on one side. Most of them are coloured. This is um, only one of a few that is black and white. And on the back, which is the wrong side, there are grid lines. So that's kind of cool because it makes you... Um, oh, I feel nervous doing this. I do lots of lives. I don't know why I'm nervous doing this one. Um, it just helps you get it nice and straight. So I want that to go into there. So... I think if I just cut off a little bit more from the top, and this is going to be one of those longer tutorials because I'm not going to edit it. We're just going to go with the flow and see what we can create. So I think that's going to look really cute in there. And there, these are all backwards because we're going to put them face down into our paint. So if I just kind of make a wee line like that and cut it to the size. And then it will go straight in there. That's the plan anyway. So so first thing, I need to make sure I'm putting it up the right way, which is that way, and it needs to go, the painted side needs to go face down into our paint. So I've been using these brushes a lot recently. This is a spelter brush. I usually do lots of work with like texture work, but because we've had the metallics and because um, the paint inlay is like a nice flat surface, um, I have been using the spelter brush a lot. Um, I was going to pour some paint out, but I appear not to have organised that, so we'll just do it straight from the tin. So I'm just going to put a nice liberal amount of paint. I'll see, this is why I should have it poured out, because otherwise you're just going to see my arm go over the screen. Nice, fairly liberal amount of paint, but I want it to be nice and smooth. And the cool thing about a spelter brush is it can help you smooth it out. And the reason we want it smooth is you, that you'll get a, a more, um, um, not a more detailed, but a flatter image and, um, uh, without too many um, imperfections in it. So this definitely is an imperfect act. So an imperfect um, craft rather. So face down, grid lines up into my paint. You cannot move it. I'm just gonna pat it down nicely into there. So straight into your wet paint. And then I like to get a brayer I find a brayer works really well. And you don't need different brayers for different things. This this is my stamping brayer and it is my inking brayer and my decoupage brayer. Okay, so that's all embedded into that wet paint. Now I'm just going to give it a little bit of a mist with water. Just a little bit. You see how the colour changed on that? And then over here, I have got just a little 
can't really see it. Just a little um, plate full of water. And I like to do this because I think you have more control about where you're putting the water. So now, just with a fairly wet, it's not dripping, but it is wet, it's more than damp um, cloth. I'm just making sure that every part, see that little word wasn't in the paint? Um, every little bit of that design is wet and embedded into that paint. I'll put that back in there. Um, oh, tell me, yep, I have put it up in the right way. So now that is on there, it's all embedded in, and we need to wait for that to dry. Um, the chalk paint's pretty, um, what's the word? Uh, forgiving. Um, you can actually dry this with a hair dry, but I've got a couple over the way that are dry as well. So we'll do another one and we'll let that one dry. So on the way here today, because we're closed on Mondays, I actually found um, this frame at the op shop. It's got glass in it as well. We don't need that bit, but I found that this is the oops, this is the backing for it. This is going to be the perfect size for um, one of the paint inlays. So we'll get rid of the frame um, and try and find the inlay that I thought would work nicely in here. And it was this really cool knife and fork. I think it was a knife and fork. See, in this one, just so many images, and I've already used a few of these images. Oh, there. Oh, no, it's a fork and spoon. How cute is that? Right, put this up there. So let's do another one. So I thought when looking at it, that would fit really nicely in that in that frame there so I'm going to cut that off the bit that I need and then carefully look after those ones has anyone used paint inlays before we have done a class here um, a paint inlays basics and that was really cool it was so much fun um, Right, so that's going to go down into there like that. I think that's going to look really cute. And then I'm thinking that this image will be really nice um, sitting on the wall like that. So I've already put one um, coat of paint on here because this is just the brown backing. I'm going to do the inlay straight onto that. Um, so now I need to do uh, another coat. So what I might do, I might just cover that bit up. paint out again and do another coat on here and you can do these into any colors at all it doesn't have to be white um, just because these were black and white I, um, I just think these will look really cute white so it's a bit of a oh no Oh yeah, no, that's a bit of a yucky bit. Um, I thought uh, the black will look really nice in the white. And then I'm going to paint the frame well, for this one, probably in a really rustic carbon black colour with a little bit of the wood poking through. And that will look mm. super cute. So, good, decent layer of paint. It's drying quite a lot, so I might just do light dusting. I've done that on some of my other ones as well, because I've actually got the air conditioner going up here today. I'm here in the shop, but I'm upstairs in the classroom, and the classroom has a really good air conditioning unit. So, that's nice and wet and juicy. Put that to the side, wipe my hands off. Cool, and then paint inlay, 
super important. Oh, don't do that. Um, straight, straight down into the paint. Try to keep it nice and flat. This one should be easy. There we go. And then I'm just going to brayer it down. You don't have to bray it down like all this area because the ink only comes off the images. So, right, that's all done. Then I'm going to give it that spritz and hope, hopefully, can you see that change colour? Then I'm going to get my, my cloth here, just a rag. Now I've got quite a bit of water on there, so I'll just pick up some of that water and make sure all of that image, squeeze some of that out, is stuck down into the wet paint. So yeah, this is quite different to furniture transfers, which are nice and perfect. This is a really imperfect medium. It creates very old age, oldie worldy kind of um, looks. And so if that is what you're after, this would be good for you. And you can do all sorts of fun things with them. So now we'll let that one dry as well. Pop this over to the side. So this one is the twin of the one that I just did before. So that's the one that we just did. And this one, I must have done that probably about an hour ago. Hopefully it's dry. Um, and um, yeah, uh, now it's dry. We can peel it off and see what it looks like. So exactly the same. Um, prep work and exactly the same paint. So now that that's all dry, we need to wet it again and that's what helps you um, pe peel it up. So just going back to my water bottle, my water plate rather. Looks like I've got a little bit of bleed through from that original picture, which I'm not mad about because I'm probably going to antique these up quite nicely do some different work on them so that needs to be all wet again I might even give that a light mister spray you don't want a squirty bottle you want a mister spray bottle to make that all wet again and then you need to peel it up I knew this would be interesting so I need to start it in the corner. Can I grab that with my nail? And if it resists, it means that it potentially isn't wet enough. Let's have a wee look. Can you see that coming up? So it feels kind of damp. I don't think that's quite wet enough. Let's put some more water on it. So you don't want to rip it up like a band aid. You just want to um, pull it up gently. There we go. Oh, can you see the image there? more water. I think that um, aircon is really drying them well, which is good. And I don't want to really rip this image because you can use them over and over again. They reckon about three times. But whatever colour you put them in, some of that will um, transfer next time too. So cute. 
right on that edge is still dry. Let's dampen that so we can pull that off. Come on. Right, and then I'll lay that down flat over here so we can reuse it. And the, the image is on there. How cute is that? So now that needs to dry. Um, and then you need to seal it. So I've prepped some things just to try out some sealers. So to seal it, because this is a water-based paint on a water-based paint, if you seal it with a water-based um, lacquer, it will more than likely run. Um, so you need to have a spray lacquer. And what you can do is you can mix our artisan lacquer with water, 50%, and just put it in a wee bottle and spray it on. That works. Um, I've had that work really successfully. Just has quite a long dry time. So I've got a couple of products here. I just bought this at the Emporium. This is called a matte varnish. A crystal coat matte varnish. I think it is oil based um, and oil based will not make this run. You can even brush on an oil based sealer as well and then once that is done you can do all sorts of things. You can seal it with wax, you can put a coloured wax on it, you can do paint work over it, all those sorts of things. So what I might do is just um, dry this one off with the hair dryer and seal it and then come back. So, hang fire. So I've just dried it off with a hair dryer and it is wet of course again because we put the, um, the damp um, cloth on it. And I'll bring another one over. Look at this one. This is a really big one. So we'll have a wee look at. So this one is a full size of a, of a whole sheet. Um, and I glued this one on with the just with the um, Artisan uh, Premium Chalk Paint and Wild Tusk as well. It's completely dried. And then, oof, this is the frame, big chunky gray painted frame to go around it. So let's have a go at taking this one off. So I think we'll give it a bit of a spritz. If you've got any questions about these, please sing out. And when you wet it, um, it should change colour again. See how it's cloudy there because it's dry? Um, when you wet it, it becomes, you can see the ink through it again much better. taking a bit of wetting. I, I've done this again on a, a similar thing to the knife, the fork and the um, spoon on a, um, maybe we'll start here, um, just on the cardboard inner of a big frame because I think this will look really gorgeous framed. Right, let's see how we go peeling this up. I use exactly the same process, even use the same colour. Um, and use the same brush and everything.
I've wetted the image down, but not all the paper that is glued down. Well, this one has worked really well. Because this is a larger one, I thought I had quite a few imperfections in it, but I think the, um, and I'll point those out in a minute, but I think using the brayer and just making sure it's completely wet and embedded into your wet paint is definitely the key. I really, really liked this image and I thought it would be beautiful. Your tiny bits just stuck there. Oh, right. So that looks pretty cool, actually. Now, see here where there's a line? All that means is I have maybe a little bit too much paint there and then it just kind of squished together in a line. Other than that, this is pretty good. Around here, um, I had some, obviously some thick paint as well, and that's dried in situ exactly um, how uh, how it's it's laid down there um, but what I can do now I need to wait for that to dry I can hair dry it I can sand off this little edge and then I'm going to seal it with that spray matte lacquer that I bought and then I'm going to do some dark wax and um, yeah make that really beautiful make it look even more aged and put it in that gray frame which I think will be gorgeous so yeah super easy super cool there's no halos or anything like that and you see here you can smudge them that is if you um put have too much water there or if you move it around too much so they're definitely smudgeable and that can even be quite a cool look in itself if you want to use it that way um, but that is what can happen if you seal it with a water-based sealer as well so let me just, I think this is going to look so cute. There's my frame. There's my frame. This is going to sit in there like that. How gorgeous is that going to look? Super happy about that one. So he needs to go just over here to dry. And rock. Okay, so these are some that I prepared earlier um, as well. Again, about an hour ago, um, this one is Oh, it's on the wall actually. This one's called Indigo Floral, that one there. So that's an all over pattern and you get eight sheets of the whole um, pattern. And I've just used a couple of them here on these boards um, because I want to show you um, about sealing. So what we'll probably do is we'll seal this one with water-based lacquer and a brush, which is not advised. Um, and we'll see how that goes. And 
darn it, I don't think I've got any up here. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, you can tell this is a live video. So this is all part of me experimenting so that you don't have to. So I've just decanted some of our matte lacquer into this um, jar and we will wipe it on here, which would be our normal way of doing things. Just do it on this one, I think. see that so you really do want to seal before you go on and do anything else so I've given that a good stir and we'll brush that on look it's not too bad actually probably because I've got a really good quality brush I'm using this spelter it definitely is some bleeding of the paint I'll just show you that so there definitely is some bleeding of the paint so that is down to two reasons um, one I've used a water-based lacquer and two I've used a brush so both those um, will have that effect of bleeding um, <laughs> like I did do this one only about an hour ago so it hasn't had time to set or anything this, it's not really terrible. It actually looks kind of cute, but um, yeah, just good to know. You don't want to wipe on your lacquer with a brush. Do that 50-50 mix, 50% water with 50% lacquer, and then do a spray and then another spray all over. So that is water-based lacquer. Now, over here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cover up half of it and we will do, um, let's see how our Artisan Clear Wax goes. So apparently some waxes are okay, some aren't. Um, I think ours will be okay, um, uh, but who knows, we kind of need to test it. So I'm going to seal half of this with wax and then the other half with the spray, um, with the spray uh, lacquer, which I believe is an all-based la lacquer. And you can usually tell because it's really stinky. So I'm just putting the wax is actually really soft. I'm putting it on with a brush, which would be a normal way of doing things. Brushing it on, okay, I am, super impressed I've tried not to brush it too much but you saw I did go over it several times and this would be our absolute normal application of um, sealing our chalk paint which would be brushing on the um, the clear wax and then wiping it off I'm just going to dot it off to start with I think it's going to be okay though The tiny touch of, oh, and I can see it right up the middle, of course. Um, the tiny touch of bleed there, but that could have been from the um, the paint and lay application itself. So that's interesting. Gentle application of our Artisan Clear Wax. Um, 
to something very fresh. I literally did this about an hour ago um, and I hair dried it to speed the process up as well. Um, it seems to be fine. So um, that's great <laughs> because that means also now you could do dark. I would definitely get that set a little bit more before I started playing with it. But you could do dark wax or whatever else you want. And then on this side, I'm just going to go over um, over there and I'm and see the difference that's the one with the brushed on water-based lacquer and this is the one with the oil-based wax I'm going to um, spray varnish this one so there's two things to spray varnish one most spray varnishes are oil-based um, not water-based and also by spraying it on you're not actually disturbing the surface of that paintwork at all so um, yeah so that's really good so you're um, avoiding both of those things so I'll go and do that over here rather than on camera So yeah, that spray varnish was a little stinky. Um, I can't even feel that it's on there. I can't dry that quickly, surely. I'm gonna go and give it another coat. very stinky so you want to do that in an area which has got good ventilation um, I actually really like that gosh it's nearly touch dry already um, you can see both sides of this the color has deepened um, and once this is completely dry which is a couple of hours I can do all sorts of things to it I can sand it I can put other colors over it all the rest of it so yeah definitely hands down I would say the easiest way of sealing it is with a spray varnish. You want to make sure if you're doing white that it's non-yellowing. Um, and the wax worked really, really well and gave it that very um, oldie worldy wax look. I'm sure the camera's not really picking up, but um, it makes the colour of the, the paint just pop out differently too. And then... Um, the matte lacquer will work with a brush, but you are going to be prone to it um, yeah, pulling out like that. So, um, yeah, that is all your options, really. Of course, if it's going on the wall or something like that, then you might not need to seal it at all if you don't want to. This is what the papers look like after they've been used and all dried. So keep those because you can use those again and again um if you want to and um i wonder if we should give that a go should we give that a go on this little one would that look cute there that little angel no maybe not um anywho let's have a look at one of our other ones and see if they have dried that is very nearly dry that's i'm impressed with that and what, do you want to know what spray lacquer I use? Spray lacquer. I had a real hard time finding anything. I got this one from the Emporium and it was a matte one, which is great. I also have this one, which is a gloss one, which kind of doesn't suit my needs um, because I don't do lots of work with gloss, but anywho that is what I have used on those so yeah maybe we'll just call that a day look how cute our little one that we did here is 
And then here's the other one that we did. They are going to look gorgeous. I will post photos up of all our projects once they are finished. And I'm gonna put that into water. And um, yeah, some of them will be here for display in the store and some of them will go into our decor projects to be to decorate the store and to be available to purchase so yeah i hope you found that interesting and next monday i will have another project that we get going on as well so thank you everyone who's watching on the live and on the replay and we will see you later